So the next topic is actually perhaps my favorite one. This is the topic of uh, super aggregation. Super aggregation is something that we touched upon yesterday briefly. This is uh, um, something that we call as a, I mean, perhaps we're going to be discussing the definitions during the panel as well. Uh, but this is practically putting multiple different OTT services or applications on a set of box and acting as the aggregator who delivers it. Uh, for those of you who have had access to Amazon Fire TV Stick, for example, this is a good example of uh, super aggregation because Amazon puts together uh, the capabilities to deliver subscription VOD, deliver applications like Netflix, or basically you can install any Android um, application on the Fire TV Stick, which gives you access to Facebook or to Uber or whatever. So um, we have had, unfortunately, a couple of last second uh, cancellations for this discussion. However, I think we have uh, one of the best experts here on the topic. So welcome on stage, Maria. You're going to be moderating this panel. And it's going to be you, Ingmar, who you've already listened to, and me. And the reason I'm here is because actually I have experience in few big telecommunication companies as well. And right now I work on two super aggregation projects. So I'll be happy to share my own experience on the topic as well. So you have the lead. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Yes, there are not many of us on a stage. But this is a good sign because that means I want to involve you as much as possible. So please interact, interrupt us as many times as you want, ask questions, because I think these two people know a lot about the topic, so make the most of their knowledge. I think everyone knows both of you, but do you want to say one sentence about your current role? Sure. OK, something completely else, according to Monty Python. <laughs> Super aggregation. Um, why is Swisscom itself posing in the super aggregation game. Uh, we run an, an Android open source setup box in the terms that we are deciding who is going to be partnering with us, bring their content on our platform. Uh, it's fully converged, so we're not just serving via setup box, we also have a converged product on the HTML5 browser and several mobile clients. So every content which is on the big screen is also available on the other screen types. Um, we're having not just the role of a redistribution, but we're also producing content ourselves, limited to the sports section. And we have um, several players already integrated, like Sky, Dazzle, and uh, Netflix on the platform, which are deeply woven in into a very sneak, unified, engaging experience. In that sense, we want to drive an pose ourselves and platform in an experience that the customer no longer needs to think where do I get want, under what terms, the platform is able to serve it to him with as few clicks as possible, as highly integrated as possible. So in, in your current role, you are leading the TV side at Swisscom. I'm in the business operations department yes, for and TV mostly dealing Swisscom. with the third party integrations. Yeah, I mean, um, until recently, I was heading the international unit for content and media and broadcast of A1 Telecom Austria Group. Uh, it's eight countries, including Bulgaria. Yeah. Uh, as of uh, end of January, I'm on a more independent role. So right now, I'm acting as a senior advisor for Arthur Dilittal. This is one of the top consulting companies worldwide. And in between, I'm doing consultancies for Liberty Global Group for um, two secret companies in the Middle East <laughs> that I cannot reveal and also running my own private business. Yeah. Perfect. So we all know that we live in a period where everyone wants to go direct to the consumer. Broadcasters want to go direct to the consumer, sports companies. But there is a feeling for consumers that maybe there are too many companies going there and consumers will not be willing to pay for lots of different services. Hence, the need of aggregation again, going back to the model of aggregating, with the difference that now companies are aggregating 
not only channels, also companies that are aggregator of channels, also not just video, it can be music, it can be other types of content, like Apple announced uh, news magazines. Mm -hmm. But let's start with the basic, and I will ask the question to the audience as well. As a telco and video, you have three choices. One, work as an aggregator, aggregating content from everyone. Two, invest in your own content, like Telefonica in Spain, that is spending a lot of money in their own series. Three, forget about video, like Vodafone in the UK, where they didn't launch any video service. So as a telco, what makes more sense? Aggregating content from others, invest in exclusive content, third, forget about video. Who wants to start? Um, I know we have a different opinion on this <laughs> there's one. There's so. a different opinion. And, um, <coughs> there's no one or two or three. Uh, it's the right mix of every strategic choice you make. You need content production by yourself to have a differentiator if you cannot acquire content exclusively because that's still a driver in the field. On the other side, I explained earlier that uh, meaningful aggregation is a differentiator for the client and giving the client guidance when the world of content delivery, the world of content acquisition and under which terms he can consume that content gets complex and complexer, that's our place to be. And there are some other drivers where telcos can be a helping hand for the content providers actually reaching those clients. Unfortunately, uh, you come from a market that is actually counter-argumenting my position yes. because mm -hmm. my position is that telcos don't know how to run successful TV. I mean, really, in Switzerland, <laughs> it's a little Good. bit of an exception, unfortunately. Okay, let's ask the audience. Yeah? Do we think telcos do not know how to run TV? One, two. two. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, why? Because... I think that the telcos in general uh, breathe, sleep, and eat uh, broadband. Yes. This is this is the, the, the reason. The main source of revenue is broadband. Yeah. This is the reason, and this is the most profitable and high-margin service where you lay some infrastructure. You have 15 years of depreciation of the assets, and you have good time to monetize it. Uh, 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 telcos have people who know how to sell SIM cards. They have completely different mentality, etc. Yes, of course, uh, some of uh, the telecommunication companies I've met, including yours, know how to transform. I think Deutsche Telekom is doing an interesting job as well, to be very honest. Um, however, uh, the services and pay TV in general is very often not even profitable in telcos. Mm. And it is being bundled with broadband, and then it becomes profitable. And the interest of a telco is not the, to develop the media market in a particular country. The interest of a telecommunication company normally is to develop their broadband penetration and tackle churn. So this is my position. So are you yeah. saying they should forget completely about the video or they should just aggregate at minimum cost content from others? Um, I mean, someone who was supposed to be here, this is Ghassan Saad from, du yes. from uh, Dubai. Unfortunately, some emergency came and he had to cancel his flight yesterday. Uh, it, we have to compare really the models between the Middle East and uh, Europe. In Europe, we had pay TV players like Liberty Global, for example, who decided to become broadband players. So they attacked the telcos in their core area. So it was a very natural response for telecommunication or United Media, for example in the region where it then works. So uh, pay TV companies, they decided yeah. to become telecommunication companies. So it's a natural response for yeah. a telecommunication company to fight back and to offer such services. This constellation is very healthy from my perspective in the Middle East. None of the Middle East players are media companies. So Do, for example, is a great distributor of OSN and partner. Uh, for those of you who don't recognize the brand OSN, it's more or less what Sky is in Europe. Yeah. And this is a very good symbiosis from my perspective. And yeah. I think that a telco finding the right partner who is a proper media company, who knows how to develop media in a particular industry, is a very healthy uh, combination. So partnership is a key word. And going back to you, Ingmar, when you mentioned you are aggregating and you're partnering with third parties, you mentioned Netflix. 
I think mm -hmm. some years ago people were terrified about Netflix, it's the enemy, we shouldn't have it in our platform, but cable companies, telcos, they are all now enhancing Netflix. But you mentioned others like Orange, but you didn't mention Amazon. What is your view about integrating in your platform a company like Amazon that is not really a channel, is in itself an aggregator of other channels, they have their own devices, they have their own voice assistants, they have a big ecosystem. So what is your view on that topic? Are all the streaming companies the same? Are some that you would like to work and some others you are more worried about? Um, well, those two are kind of different animals. Amazon themselves, they are a super aggregator themselves. Content for them is a secondary role. They do everything to create their prime subscription. Whatever service is driving that forth. Um, saying this, in a reflection, they are also having price points in market which are very, very low, and which to some extent may attack your own price points of your existing product in the, in the market. So when you're partnering with such a big entity with a long breath and a long strategic vision, you need to be very careful how you engage, on which level, and how you can create a win-win situation for both partnerships. Because Netflix has shown one size didn't fit all, but they reached a penetration in the market now and a perception of the brand which serves for each other. So there's no way around Netflix. You want, if you want to be attractive in the broadband market and you want to offer a TV service, Netflix needs to be part yeah. of it, just for the content. Okay. So Netflix, I think we all agree, it makes sense to have it because people want to watch Netflix. So if you don't offer it, they will find it somewhere else. But the que also some operators are uh, integrating with Amazon, but some of them are a bit more worried about it. So Stanislav, since you're now an advisor and you know everything about telcos and outside telcos, do you recommend Ingmar he should sign a deal with Amazon or you are more careful about giving him that advice? Uh, I'll, I'll make a step back <laughs> before that a little bit. Um, I have knocked on the doors of Netflix, Amazon, Google, Apple four or five years ago as in my former role. And door, do, those doors were seriously closed. Like they were super arrogant, all of these companies. So you wanted to work and with them, but they were... Absolutely, as a telecommunication company. Yeah. I mean, they're basically saying, we, we don't need you, you're a telecommunication company, all who of the them, hell are you? Including Netflix. So. Yeah, mostly Netflix. Uh, Netflix didn't want to work with... A few years ago, wait okay. for it, yeah. And something dramatically changed in the last two years, I would say, or two and a half years. Uh, both Google and Netflix, for example, changed completely their attitude. We'll come to the topic of Google mm -hmm. as well. We've both had some experiences. Uh, Netflix in particular now wants, and Spotify, so it's not just Netflix, because yeah. we talk about super aggregation. This yeah, correct. is it's more than video, leading of media course. content and streaming companies you know, how to deliver yeah. them to the households in the end. This is the question. So they completely changed their attitude. Now they are chasing telecommunication companies, how would you even use the word desperately, to partner. I don't know the right answer. I have my own theory why. My own theory is that I think they have reached the saturation they can reach in the markets that they can do by themselves. And that saturation in reach is not very high. This is 30 to 45 to 50 percent. And I personally link this with the level of credit card and online payments penetration in these markets. Uh, I recently checked in Bulgaria, for example, it's 30%, the credit card penetration. In Austria, it's 43%. I didn't do a lot of research for other markets, but I think it's like compares Eastern Europe or Central Eastern Europe with Western Europe. And you have to understand that a telecommunication company has a 99.9% uh, reach on payment methods, the so-called carrier billing. Mm -hmm. So right now, Netflix and uh, Amazon and Apple, etc., they are more than happy. I mean, for Amazon, it's a bit different because for them, the prime service is, again, for something else. Yeah. Their core business is retail. So they are desperate to find and to increase their reach by partnering with telecommunication companies primarily because of carrier billing because this gives them access to the remaining households. Yeah. So this is my theory, more or less, why they're partnering. My recommendation to telecommunication companies like Swisscom, take advantage of it. 
This is my, my recommendation. So your recommendation yeah. is speak to Amazon, it's a good partner for you. Well, it's your advice to Igmar. The second thing is the uh, voice control, which is a feature yeah. that everyone wants to have. Alexa is, uh, for those of you who don't know, Alexa is the home assistant or the artificial yes. intelligence from Amazon. There is Google Home as well. Mm -hmm. So at least the leading um, service providers, pay TV service providers in Europe, and I have to be very honest, there are two platforms in Europe which for me are the most advanced. One is Swisscoms, the other one is Liberty Globals. So these two, both um, platforms, are eager to have voice control, remotes, and assistance. So voice is a good question. It's a, it's a new topic that I'm going to start now, Ingmar. Because it's true, with so much content in your platform, aggregating so many channels, aggregating content from third parties, what is the role of voice? What are you doing with voice assistants? Are you launching your own? Are you partnering with third parties? Again, different countries, different strategies. Yeah. What is your position regarding voice assistants? Okay. Um, I actually heard three questions in the last two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let me address it first. Uh, we came up with the uh, topic of carry billing. We talked about Amazon, Netflix, but the zoo of animals is getting bigger and bigger. We're seeing Disney coming the way, HBO is already in the Nordics percent with their content. Um, other partners are going to come the way. And we talked about the problems of credit card penetration, but it's not just credit card penetration, it's also a credit card has an expiring date of almost two years. Whenever a credit card expires, you need to renew the subscription with your subscribers, and on average, through some expiration in the carrier billing business, they lose 70 to 20 percent of the subscriber base every two years. So that's where we're happy to jump in as a telco and as a redistribution partner because that's our core competence. We have had the customer relationship, our billing relationship for decades with okay, our customers. So, so yes, you are saying that uh, for consumers, it's good to have a telco who aggregates all the services. So you only have one bill, and with that bill, you pay for all the services. Yes, we. We enable the content providers to reach our customers with their content and even enable them to charge and bill them correctly without any expiration date. So yeah. churn reduction on that is quite an issue and a drive for us, but we are willing to give a helping hand. Second question. Um, around the voice. Sorry? So second question around voice assistance. This was the fourth question. That's the fourth question. <laughs> that was the third one. Um, how would you deal, how would you engage with such a partner, giving you a recommendation? Um, it needs to be a fit for both partners and the long-term strategies need to align. So for us, we're open to talk to everybody, but um, the major partners often take the position of one size fits all because they are also dealing with a zoo of different operators and different companies transporting their service and their content to the customers. It needs to work for both sides. Third question, voice assistant. Um, we talked about UHD, we talked about HK. So what's the next big thing? For sure, there are two major uh, players in the market who have developed and invested hardly in that field. I think Apple almost lost the game. I'm putting myself in an awkward position judging any of those solutions yet, but given the market reach and the device penetration, Alexa and OK Google, they're doing an excellent job. And if we would ramp up our own service, it's really hard to compete with those in the field. So again, we're coming back to the, to the point of what partnerships can you find with those yeah. providers yeah. to enable them and to give us, again, a differentiation in market where we have to compete. So what is your current position, your current position with voice assistance? Is that functionality available? Uh, for Swisscom users, can they search for content using voice? The UHD box which we launched in 2016 has um, speech-to-text recognition yeah. because the voice is already built in, in the remote. But that is not, to an extent, an assistant. It's basically transferring your commands into an action which is then launched on the platform. Yeah. But the assistant <coughs> is talkback, it's interaction. It's the easiest way of stating what you actually want to do without touching a remote. Uh, for Google integration, uh, Google basic, I mean, this is uh, a little bit of a different topic. So when we talk yeah. about super aggregation, 
I would be happy if we look at into the topic from two different perspectives. One is the delivery of media, like aggregating the content, because telcos right now are aggregators. I mean, we basically pick up channels, we put them in different packages, we call them basic or tiers, like basic, extended, HBO add-ons, etc. So this is aggregation. Yeah? And on this one, like delivering, getting media and putting it together the way we think makes sense, and delivering it to the consumers. This is one part which I think we have to really like revisit. Yes. And the other part is the devices. So the devices is another battlefield between pay TV operators, not ne just necessarily just telcos, where uh, having the best experience, user interface, clicking very fast, like Sony PlayStation was the comparison of the standard five years ago, how fast is it? left and right, etc., making it attractive was a decisive manner. So coming on the first topic, on the um, putting content together, the thing that I personally find wrong and that needs to be revisited is that in the end we're pushed as telcos to be the end buyer. So Discovery or Disney or whoever, they, they basically go to us and they charge us whatever money they, they think we have to pay. And then if we're able to monetize it or not is a completely different question. So this, of yeah. course, puts challenges. And, and in the end, in the value chain of the media industry, where we have producers, aggregators, and distributors, it turns out that the pay TV operators are not distributors, they're buyers. Yeah. It's not like a supermarket where you give your product and if they sell it, you get the money. It's the other way around. So I think this model has to change. I think that basically telecommunication companies or operators have to distribute the Spotify, the Deezers, the, uh, Am uh, the Amazon Prime, the Netflix, no. the HBO Go, yeah. and yeah. so so many other apps are on the market these agree, days, Marjorie? and get a commission yes. out of that. He's very yeah. thinking well, a lot. If, if you distribute all of them, just because you're forced to, you're giving up your long-term leverage. Yeah. Because you're giving up the household. If, if you're the device base where all those partners come into the household, you're reduced to a narrow window of, of services. Um, and that is a consideration, where do you want to be as a telco? What is yeah. the role of the telco? Today we're reduced to the role of um, we just infrastructure and broadband provider. And we're putting services on top to, to sweeten the product for the customers still to come to us. And to an extent, what we explained before, TV is the reason to adapt our broadband. And I, I agree yeah. with you that the, yeah. the, that the role of um, the classic pay TV, just the linear distribution, it, it's changed because it used to yeah. be we buy the content, we repackages, and we sell it. To an extent where it sometimes is not even um, generating revenue or coming out positively for some players in the market, yes. But that is changing. The major content producers going their way in direct to consumer, they're looking for new ways. But we also try to, to transform ourselves in still being part of the value chain and still being engaged with them in creating that yeah. custom experience which serves all of them. So we spoke a lot about Amazon, about Google, Netflix and all that. What about social platforms? What about Facebook? Will we see telcos also talking to Facebook, we will see Facebook as part of one of your propositions. We had several looks at social engagement, at sharing features, how would you break up just the consumption area into an interaction area where you would bring in your friends. And that is a very hard field to manage. Also that the content is produced directly publicly, what yeah. we uh, <coughs> saw with all these uh, control issues, who is producing what content, which audience is the content served, who is ha having an oversight on this, that's a field we not even want to step in because it's the major players are struggling with it. How can we deal with it? Because I, this question is for both. Uh, I heard from pay TV operators, they are concerned about Facebook uh, in the sense that, especially for sports, there have been lots of deals with companies like La Liga in Spain signing a deal with Facebook in India. Pay TV operators are concerned because if, like Telefonica, pay a lot of money to have the rights to La Liga, mm -hmm. if this is available via social media, uh, Facebook in La India, there is piracy. It's very easy anywhere in the world. 
fake your VPN, go to Facebook and watch content for free. Is piracy something that worries you? Is working with social media platforms something that worries you because of piracy issues? Uh, Any of you? The piracy is not the main thought which comes up when, de when bringing this content onto the platform. It's mostly, is it great content? Is the content uh, lasting? Mm -hmm. Because if it's just a, a recording, live recording of an event, um, you might generate some audience and some traction. Yeah. And there's also um, the advertising window. How is it marketed? How do you participate there? Because I know some sports companies, like in the UK, the Premier League, didn't want to sign the deal with Facebook to protect Sky, who pay a lot for those rights. So I know piracy is a concern for many pay TV operators, especially with the sports when you pay a fortune, and then you don't want someone to watch it illegally in a very easy way. What, what do you think, Stanislav? I, I I mean, this is with regards to the question of exactly what is the role of the telco and what are the risks you're yes. supposed to carry in general. I, yes. I just don't think these risks have to be carried by telcos. I agree that we have to find a differentiator. Yeah. And uh, on the other side, I think we have to really pick our battles and choose our battles. Yeah. I don't think the battle of uh, like buying content and investing into it or even producing content is a battle for a telco to participate. I'm sure with the next discussion, we're going to have interesting opinions on this topic as well. However, it is just my personal opinion that perhaps this is the, this is the reality. I don't deny it. But perhaps there are other models, as I mentioned in the Middle East, where this battle is completely unnecessary. Why am I saying that? Because uh, when you look into um, former Yugoslavian countries about this battle and like where it's half of um, the sports rights are with Telecom Serbia, the other half of the, tele of the sports rights are with the uh, United Group, or you look into the uh, exclusivities of sports rights in uh, Romania or Bulgaria, I don't think the markets actually have a healthy media environment. And when I say healthy, I mean an environment that can invest. Because without yeah. investment, you cannot grow and you cannot develop. Healthy means that, yes, everyone in Bulgaria is very happy to have for less than five euro all the premium content they can imagine, but you have no idea how wrong this is because in three or four years you're going to lose all of that because nobody can afford to pay for it anymore uh, because it's a non-profitable yeah. model. Yeah? I want to make sure the audience has questions and if you want to interact or if anyone has a question, anyone wants to ask anything about what we talk till now, about Amazon, Facebook, voice assistants. So therefore my position is media companies can carry the risk of uh, mm. piracy mm. and uh, like tackle all of their issues in this area and what to produce and what kind of content drama yeah. or short formats or niche content makes money. I mean, this is their job to do. I don't think this is the job for pay TV operators or aggregators. Yeah. I think the role for an aggregator is to find a differentiation in the aggregated package itself and the device. But so this is the other topic that I wanted to touch of upon. Of course, yeah? but again, as a telco, you can aggregate, but maybe as a telco, you also spend money in the sports rights. So I think it depends, again, if the telco is just an aggregator or if the telco is investing in exclusive content, in exclusive rights. So then the relation can be different versus uh, we're drifting a little bit. Uh, I think the, um, the question wherever we are engaged in producing content ourselves, apart from the question if it is a differentiator, yeah. uh, the main driver for telco to engage in super aggregation is yes. carry billing, meaningful aggregation mm. to have a good <coughs> proposition for the client, protecting of its assets, and even through the partnerships you engage in, market, help them market the content to the customers because we know who our customers are. We have a direct channel to them. That's something, if you're going the OTT approach, well, good luck with that. Yeah. Oh, this one I completely agree. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, this is exactly what I believe a operator or a telco should be. This is a gateway to the households. Yeah? Yeah. So telcos should focus on controlling the households, knowing who they are, knowing yeah. their habits, collecting the data, behavioral data, not necessarily 
uh, like the way Facebook does, because you can always virtualize it. We also have a session on this one in the afternoon, uh, and what to do and how to monetize this data. But in the end, don't don't uh, put your yeah. nose in something which is not your business, like sports rides, etc. Yeah. Because of this, and because of telcos thinking that they can conquer a market by buying the next round of three years yes. of Champions League, this is the reason why Champions League rides are jumping to the skies and yeah. at impossible prices. And there are lots of new players, and like the song, the I, sports. I negotiated yeah. with these guys, and they, yeah. they have become so arrogant these days that they have clearly said, listen, our prices are not made for you to make money out of it. You're going to yeah. lose money if you buy Champions League and if you don't know what to do with it. So they really know that their prices are completely unreal. But in the end, when someone uh, is uh, ready to pay this money, yes. why, why go of down? Course. I mean, we just have to make sure that they are not crazy companies anymore who are willing to invest this uh, Some <laughs> crazy money. I think we have to pull the cable from the external. Yeah. Speaker again. So, in all this world of aggregating video, music, there's another uh, genre we spoke yesterday a lot games, gaming, esports, and the role of 5G in this new world with so much content. Ingmar, I know Swisscom has been in the news about announcements on 5G. You have very ambitious plans, like at the end of the year, most of students will, will be covered with 5G. Um, Do you want to comment a bit on that topic? As I only can comment as far as it is public known, we have announced that we're going to cover, I think it is 90% of, of Switzerland by, by end of, uh, was it 2019 or 2020? I, see, I sure. think it was 2019, 2019, 90%, but people were a bit surprised because... That was the official announcement. Mm -hmm. uh, we now have a public discussion about uh, 5G kicked off in Switzerland and we're going to see where that will lead us. But that was our initial commitment. We believe in the technology. Um, 5G is a number of means of transporting content to, to customers and having now the, not just the network commercially, and commercially available in Switzerland but also the handsets, it's going to pick up. How are you planning to monetize 5G? I'm not from the mobile department, okay. I cannot extend to that. <laughs> Stanislav, what do you think, that Telcos should invest as soon as possible in 5G? Absolutely. Where do you yes. convince about Absolutely, because <laughs> this is exactly the battlefield where yes. Telcos should uh, compete and fight each other. I mean, this is infrastructure. There is nothing unsexy about infrastructure. In the end, without infrastructure, none of us uh, can use 90% of the things we're using on our phones or uh, in our, our, our households. Well, if someone finds it that it is not sexy enough, they can go and work in a different industry. But on the other hand, this is what telcos should do. They should ensure that there is yeah. sufficient infrastructure to meet the demands, and that actually triggers development and the growth of the business altogether. And these businesses are not just media. We yeah. have uh, smart homes. We have yes. um, Internet of Things. We have uh, security. We have smart cities. We have uh, e-health, we have um, climate technologies, etc. All of these things that you have as, in, as summits here in yes, lots of opportunities are practically completely dependent on the development yeah. of uh, 5G yeah. and more and more connectivity yeah. and uh, highly rela uh, relatable uh, broadband, mobile yeah. broadband. Yeah. Are you already, because yesterday we saw that gaming is the number two driver, are you already partnering or talking to games companies uh, a few years back, we looked into game streaming yeah. as a part of the proposition, which we can also include on, on the TV sets. Mm -hmm. But we have given up on that because we weren't basically convinced of the experience being able to deliver would be that great. Yeah. Having said that, we're engaging in, uh, with, together with ESL, with the Austin's presentation yesterday yeah. uh, in esports gaming. Yeah. Um, we had four games launched last year and we're looking forward to having Counter-Strike also as part of that portfolio next year. And that's really engaging yeah. audiences. It's, it's uh, also engaging with the younger audiences, yes. with in general telcos have problems to maintain with. Yeah. Um, so that's a very interesting field to be in Good. and it's a lot of fun. That's Let's talk about the devices by the way. Yes. Yeah, this is the other aspect. Uh, I, I know we, we've had several discussions on this topic. Uh, I actually changed my mind a little bit. I came a little. I came more to Ingmar's uh, position on this one. 
and we'll, we'll explain what we're talking about. Uh, I mean, first of all, the control of uh, HDMI 1 on the TV set, I personally think is crucial and very important. I don't think consumers are happy to switch and search and go through complicated home theater systems as they were popular seven, eight years ago. I think that whatever you plug in HDMI 1 these days, that's it. I mean, you rarely go anywhere else. Unless you have a game console, even though when you have a game console, mm. they are also competing in the super aggregation yeah, field. But now with cloud, yeah. Yeah, cl with a cloud game, you don't even need to have a console. Or are expensive computers. As well, so probably yeah. they are going to lose the game. Yeah? Yes, because you don't need to have and expensive end, devices anymore. In the end, PlayStation and Xbox, yeah. they are already at their fourth or fifth year's version, so everyone wants yeah. to see what's coming next. But, but anyway, whatever you plug into HDMI 1, that's it. And if your device as the super aggregator is not good enough or not like uh, covering enough range of services, which are not necessarily yeah. just media, but it has yeah. to be way more, then I think yeah. that you're going to lose the game. So for me, super aggregation and telecommunication game or etc. is also a fight for the most comprehensive and widespread and like scalable uh, device that you can put on HDMI 1. Good question because I one, wanted I to speak about yeah. devices and also yeah. the role of set of box. This is something that uh, Thibaut wanted to speak about. But again, we, we keep hearing news, the set of box is dead. In a few years, nobody will have a set of box. What is your view as a telco about having or not having a set of box? Are the set of boxes dead? Will set of box companies have to move immediately to the cloud? Because this is exactly what we disagreed, but now we agree. <laughs> yes, uh, uh, set of box is dead, is not dead. Do telcos need a box? Okay, set of box is not dead. It's not dead. But it is horribly expensive. It is very expensive. Very expensive because. For consumers or for the telcos? You just uh, talked about being able to consolidate, bringing every service up. So the setup box is not going to be cheap. And uh, switching setup boxes in field, normally you would have a setup box at least four to six years in field for a telco operator, that it would be economic economically bearable to have those uh, deployed in field. But since we're really focused on, on the experience we deliver and we want to deliver a great experience, the setup box is the only mean of term for us right now technologically to guarantee that the experience delivered at the endpoint at the screen is like we wish okay. it to be. For you, it's important. It will not die. You will have a set of box. Stand is up. Absolutely <laughs> agree. I can even uh, I, I can just enforce what Ingman just said. Um, and forget about the hardware. The hardware is cheap. It's like you can buy whatever for fifteen dollars these days, probably, if you negotiate or if you have scale. The platform behind, so the middleware, is where you get very expensive. Based on my recent projects and researches from several companies. I can clearly say that the cost of ownership per subscriber per month of a very comprehensive super aggregation middleware is anywhere in the range between 6 euro to 10 euro per month. This is the cost of ownership of the device and then you put the hardware depreciation on top of that. So practically only to, to support the platform without forgetting about any content rights behind which normally are double that cost. You are already at a cost of 10 euro. So imagine how much the service is supposed to cost. So this is exactly the question of the industry these days. Shall we invest in those devices and carry such costs or go to something that brings exactly the same features, comes for free from Google, for example? Android so TV. one second, yeah. Stanislav, you're saying yeah. that it's better if they move to Google and they forget about the box? I'm not saying that, no. I'm saying that this, isn't, this, isn't, this is a uh, option. It's an option, but it's why would they want to move to Google when they can ha have control of their own subscriber? This is exactly the battlefield that um, I don't think there is a, like an end winner in this. Some companies are experimenting and trying to work with the uh, Android TV devices, uh, but it's like signing a deal with the devil. Do you want you to ask the audience for help? That, that Who is too harsh. The set of that box? is too harsh. Yes. Yeah. No. Again, under which term t do you come together to a partnership? Yeah. You just mentioned the total cost of ownership. I cannot relate to ours, but in yeah. a sense of, is the product you're going to market able to refinance that cost, or are you looking in a different market at a different price point where 
you be totally flexible on, on the actual delivery? Would you be on-screen client? Would you go native? Would you go via stick and dongle? For us, the product we market and we have in the field, it needs to serve the needs of an audience starting by the early 20s going up to 85. So our audience yeah. has many different aspects and requirements, how of they course. engage with the platform and how they're actually able to use it. Who would go the way like we just saw in the Swiss market, Sunrise announced a set-up box based on Apple TV, as did um, Salt a year ago. Everyone who had that remote in the hand is either throwing it away after a few hours, or he's a totally digital nav native who is willing to go the way of clicking his thumb numb. Yeah. So that's that's a way you can go the the Apple way. You can go an, an, a Google way. All have its advantages attached. So all those questions are not binary yes and no. Yeah. There's so many aspects to take into account, and it needs to be a fit to your company strategic to willingness to pay and invest in the platform. And it comes again to the end, to the experience you want to be yeah. able to deliver. So Android TV practically provides to companies that, don't want, that cannot afford to build such a platform access to exactly the same yeah. features. However, uh, I was recently advising a company to go for Android TV. So of course, it's still a project we're discussing. Uh, and uh, having a meeting with the Android TV team, uh, they were saying no advertisement is going to be pushed on the main middleware screens, etc. Our strategy is to push advertisements and to push our own apps like YouTube, and this is where we monetize. And uh, su surprisingly, or for some not surprisingly, two weeks later, advertisement was pushed on the main screen. Of course. So uh, Google makes these decisions yes. as a snap. So, yeah. And this is the risk that you may carry. I mean, it's, it provides you amazing access to these features. <laughs> However, it is not yours. You don't control it. You depend on a huge company that may switch their strategy uh, within seconds if so they find it fit. Yeah. So as I did I almost spent an hour on stage, yeah. shall we give the audience I know. the last 10 seconds? Yes, who wants to ask a question very quickly to these people here? You have free advice from Stanislav today and from Igma. Don't waste this opportunity to ask a question about Google or about Amazon or any insight information that you want to ask? No questions? OK, everyone wants coffee, so please feel free to have a coffee break. Thank you very much to the two of you. It was very interesting talking to both. And please grab them in the coffee break if you want and ask them difficult questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, very Thank much. you Maria. Thank you.